WNF. He's been at a couple of hats. Usually MSM WNF tends to be up his alley. Okay. Um, it, and for Power Bottom 6 he actually was originally known as Sunday Scorer. He's, he's actually really good friends with Charlie, K-Swiss, players hey. like that, Eon. So he's kind of familiar with characters. A lot of uh, a lot of people have been telling him to stick around a uh, specific character. That's what I tell people. Pick a character. Either you take W's or L's. Stick to them. Kevin H, of course, is going to be rocking out the Peach. Power Bottom 69 is going to go ahead and rock out the Luigi. I mean, both of these guys give each other the nod. Let's go right into game one of the first night here at Other MSM. Should have brought out the Daisy. We only had a couple of fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. It would have been great. All right. Starting the game off on Pokemon Stadium 2 here. Definitely a stage that a lot of people like to start off out on for the first uh, game. Oh, it's, okay. It's pretty good because it's a bi-plat, so you have two platforms you can work off. Some people might like Battlefield, or usually the mono plat would be Smash Smash Bros. But bi-plats are pretty good for both characters all around. Usually some characters tend to do really well on bi-plats. And for a character like Beach, you know, you have a lot of combos you can confirm up. And not only that, the edge guarding tools to force your opponent to possibly go for a platform. It's, it's a pretty good option. And for Kevin H here, he's doing an excellent job of making sure he has to turn up to send Kevin... I'm sorry, to send... Um, Power Bottom. Power Bottom is going to use the turn out to send Kevin H a little bit lower. And it's Whoa. really good. There's the bomb. But unfortunately, you aren't going to survive holding the shield at the last second. He just threw it. And I thought it actually connected. But it looks like it just hit the platform and he held shield. Mm -hmm. All right. I thought that was actually going to connect. I was like going to pop up a oh. second. All right. Good bear. It was good, for, it was good for Kevin H because he actually wanted to force Power Bottom to make that low recovery. And that's usually where Peach can actually have a hit or miss opportunity there. She has to commit to going to the up If she goes too low, she will suffer. Yeah, unfortunately, Luigi doesn't have his his Cyclone off stage anymore. So it is a little easier to edge guard Luigi in this game. And, um, especially for Peach, too. Because she just has... She could just float and have her multiple jumps and just be off stage forever. Yeah. Look at it's, these up air juggles here. We talked about it earlier, right? Having those floats is really useful right there, especially with the up air. The damage that Power Bottom was able to put out there is the forward air. Edge guard situation to force out Kevin H to go low here. Missing the edge guard, though. Yeah, I thought that fair was going to connect there as well. It just barely was out of reach. He went lower there, dropped down the low, like you said, which was smart. Mm -hmm. It looked like it was his only option to come back here. Um, but yeah, Power Bottom doing a really good job holding this uh, stage, keeping neutral here. Oh. Oh, barely able to edge guard that one. That was a good try. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I definitely appreciate it, right? You <laughs> went for it. <laughs> All right. One thing I do like that Kevin H is looking for, right, is the fireballs. Usually the Mario Brothers like to have fireballs in play, so they can go ahead and find a follow-up, a grab, a confirm off of it. Immediately, Kevin H used that to his advantage. Got himself some space. I respect it, too, because you know what? That's what you're looking for. It's a pretty beefy combo to, out there to put Power Bottom off the stage. Oh, yeah. Respect the forward air. You can kiss the ring, but you can never touch the crown. <laughs> that was good. I like that. Oh, it just goes, reads that roll, and just up smashes. Power Bottom isn't going to let Kevin get away with this game at all, and he's going to take that stop, closing it out. And it's good, too. You're using your dash dance, uh, especially to keep your opponent in the guessing game, right? Am I going to read your jump recovery, your, your get-up attack? Mm -hmm. That's one thing you got to have in mind. Oh, yeah. I feel like ledge trapping is a huge thing in this game as mm -hmm. well, um, and it's it's critical for this uh, pop of, like this play. Speaking of critical right here, Arisdale, that was a solid fireball <laughs> into the up smash. And it came back to how Kevin H was feeling comfortable. I talked about it earlier. The Mario Brothers usually like to have a fireball in play, in play force their opponent to hold shield for a good option, or follow up immediately afterwards. That was really smart from Kevin H. Immediately just to turn around. I usually want to see my boys out here win, but I got to give it to Kevin H that game. Took game one with a lot of pride, understanding, hey, I got to go back to what feels comfortable here. Yeah. And that was that was even that was a good set in my opinion too, because or a good game, because both players didn't really have like they didn't have the whole lead in the game. Like they kind of were pretty much even until the very last stock there. Yeah. And 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 for Power Bottom, he did an excellent job. Even like you said earlier, right? Making sure he has to turn up out and play is super crucial because you're able to force your opponents to pick a low or a high recovery. And we did see him toss out the turnips a little bit lower because he knew Kevin H might have been forced to be going low. He felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. Take away the comfort, and you start putting your opponent in a sticky situation. And the comfort right there on the platform, Power Bottom to start using those floats. Like you said, Peach has so much options with them. She does. Okay, four up airs into fair there, trying to go for that F smash, but. Probably a little too uh, too cheeky there. I mean, the only cheeky player we see with those S matches is going to be elegant. So hopefully, <laughs> Kevin H can channel a little bit of him in this match. Yeah, we just definitely like to throw out their F smashes. But okay, here we go with the turn up play again. 
gonna try and give Luigi with that, or just keep him off stage as long as he can, but yeah. Unfortunately, he knew he couldn't make it back after that, and that was a good play by Power Bottom. Um, keeping him off stage with that turn of edge guard there. Such a good utensil that Peach has, and um, really, like, <laughs> it's too good. She has Stitch Face, she has Dot Eyes, she just pulls out Bomb Saturn, like, Peach and the is crazy. And the crazy game. thing about Bomb is she actually doesn't hurt herself with Bomb. That's what's crazy about it, too. She can actually pull out some ridiculous crazy. combos with Bomb. Broken. <laughs> I, I, I always fear Peach and Mario Party, man, but for Luigi, man, I actually fear your brother's wife. Good that's, uh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. All right, down throw, looking okay, for the VI there. there, and gets the backer 72% onto Kevin H. Our bottom looking to turn things around, has the momentum in hand here. It looked like he more, he reacted, he like waited to react if he was going for a bear or if he was going to follow up with the Nair if he was DIing um, instead of DIing out like he did. Exactly so. right. Always understand your opponent's panic option or even just your DI is a really good to go ahead and follow, get follow ups. Yeah, so that actually was a really good wait by Power Bottom there. Um, when you read your opponent's textbook, your opponent looks like, yo, man, you're cheating, and I feel like I'm being cheated, and I can't really play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then in reality, all, all they're doing is just being patient, mm -hmm. waiting for you to throw out the first move, first attack. and they're First just gonna DI? Follow. Yeah, oh, first DI too, man. They're going to follow up after that. All right. Kevin H looking to fight for more than his life here. There's the dash back into the up air. Man. Finds a platform extension there with another one. And immediately puts Kevin H off to the corner, man. If you're going to put him in the corner, make sure you put him in a coffin. Kevin H back on the stage. All right. Oop, okay, did it read that ro roll get up there oh, nice. looking for this back air trying to close out the stock early oh, nice. <laughs> going for the f smash <laughs> as well and i respect it because if you're seeing your bullet dash dance like that you might be able to catch him off guard Keep some players gone. yeah some some players just love the movement so much they actually run into their opponent's options using the turn up there making sure <laughs> they have enough time to get back on the stage there's the up tilt finds himself time there at the corner the turn up actually stopped um Kevin from going off and properly trying to even attempt doing anything off stage. So yep. that was actually really smart. All right, well, good stuff to my boy Leo, aka Power Bottom. Able to, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, Soka <laughs> has some players with some names, man. <laughs> we, have power, <laughs> we have Power Bottom, we, we have Esports King, we have, I can't, even, I can't even say the rest of the names, I'm not gonna lie. But, anyways, Kevin H out there losing the next game. Power Bottom with slight momentum, two stocks <laughs> to the lead. We definitely got a lot of troll names in SoCal here, it's pretty funny coming through, looking through the bracket, seeing all the names, but, um, all right, game three here, let's see, I didn't even see what stage they chose, but let's see if there's a counter, pick going to Smashville, mm -hmm. it's going to be a monoplat, static platform, mm -hmm. going to be in place here, it allows some characters to do some cheeky things, especially with the platform being on there, like, like just like that, right, your opponent's going to land on the platform, you're able to carry them a little bit more with up airs, for Kevin H, I kind of want to see him go back to a little bit what he challenged in game one, use those Fireballs to make sure he's actually holding Power Bottom in place. So he can go ahead and find those grabs that he might be looking for. And that's a pretty good example of what he's looking for, right? Finding the spacing. There's the there's the Fireball. And then let me find him. That's a solid whip punish here. Oh, oh, didn't B reverse the up B. So Peach didn't wasn't able to grab the ledge there, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna cost him there. Yeah, that's looking to cost more than a life. It costs the whole stock when you cost when you pay the stock, man. Looks like his stock canceled into Luigi's up tilt and send them off the stage yet again. Power bottom struggling here in game three. And it looks like um, it's so interesting too that Luigi, uh, Kevin, Luigi, um, excuse me, Kevin here mm -hmm. when he throws out his um, little. The, the, the tether grab it, yeah. with the little plunger. The, the plunger, it's pretty good because it actually has a hitbox and it can That's actually two-frame. It's, it's, yeah. used, it's not only a grab, but if it's spaced right or correctly, mm -hmm. it's actually going to hit you like and, an item. Exactly. And you can even throw and you can even have it there at the edge and it can actually fall down and hit your opponent when they're trying to make low recoveries like that. There's the grab. Wait, you can fall down with it mm -hmm. and do it too? Yeah. So no. if you have it at the ledge here for those situations, you can it'll fall down and you can even use it when you're trying to get on the ledge card. It's really good. It's, it's just a tool that some people thought like, hey, Luigi's grab was nerfed. Matter of fact, it just received changes that might have been more beneficial for Luigi this game. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna I, lie I agree. I actually kind of I like the grab. I yeah. think it's uh, really good. Also for Luigi's spacing, he kind of mm -hmm. likes to dash in and out, and he could just easily just mix it up and get that easy tether grab. I think it's great. But Couple all right. Uh, wow, P Power Bottom actually down to his last stock already. Yeah, and so far Kevin H with three stocks, feeling the heat, using the turnip to actually get him off. He gets planted there. There's the dart. No points. Power Bottom able to escape death here and get back on the ledge. Solid mix-up here. We talked about it earlier. You gotta yeah. watch 
the dash movement here. If your opponent's gonna be doing that, never expect that. Always expect the unexpected, especially when they do moves like that, right? If you see your opponent going for dash dances like that, they might try to sleep you up. Yep, such a bait, man. If you, they're gonna dash away, and you're holding shield, they know as soon as they walk away, you're gonna want to drop it. So yeah. sometimes it's just safer to hold shield a little while longer and mm -hmm. just take that grab instead of losing uh, the game entirely like we just saw right there. Yeah. So. And if you see your opponent run away, that's giving you a bit of a second chance to go ahead and mm -hmm. say, hey, if you're going to let me have a second at getting up from the ledge and you're planning to go ahead and dash dance like that, it allows me to just come back, especially with a monoplot, you're able to come back to the platforms. Although that's the thing about Smash for Ride, it is a monoplot, that platform kind of low, mm -hmm. so you have to respect when you make that choice. Nonetheless, so unfortunately, I left the power bottom. I don't want to see my boy move on. We're going to come up to next to our opponents here. And I see our player already sitting down. I'm not going to lie, so many pools that I can't even look at the bracket and tell you which one it is. <laughs> I that's, know. That's how many entries we have I here. I should have it up on my phone, too. Oh, I need to. I, need I usually to my do. Phone and really I play. usually do, but the thing about here is there's so many players. And I don't even know which pool to tell you this one is going to be here. But of course, Warchief keeping me updated here. Ooh. It is going to be Sparky or. Spanky versus Enigma. Spanky. Yeah. <laughs> These names. Mm -hmm. They're fun. Um, and of course, shout outs to our Japanese brethren being out here. I do see Zachary. Yeah, I got Zachary here tonight. <laughs> Shuton. Hi, guys. And, and then, of course, they're out here chilling, enjoying themselves, and enjoying this day. Of course, if you guys wonder, thank you guys so much for putting in the compendium. For Team Japan, I actually made here. Zachary didn't make it evident that this is going to be his <laughs> last tournament for a little while, simply oh, because. I He's going to go full school, right? I mean, education is important. It's education in Smash. I mean, getting second place at an eight-year event. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, such a young prodigy. And even go ahead. I want to see how so cool. So talented. I want to see these kids graze in school. I'm not going to lie. I know. <laughs> no, not only that, too, but I feel like um, the culture in Japan mm -hmm. as well. School is so important for exactly. their families and, and their parents tend to be a little strict and want their kids to perform go all the way and it's um that's awesome that he's yeah. managing to do both and good for him to come out uh get one last hurrah before he focuses on school and yeah hopefully even in japan i'm sure we'll see him around but that's uh good for him he's yeah. so young and crazy he's talented it's for somebody for somebody so young he's already put out such a name to himself and even be oh yeah especially at summit especially one of his first tournaments uh, and for, we, we talked about earlier, T, he's so good. He, T, the Pac-Man, of course, oh, he's wondering. He's, yeah, he made his appearance so uh, at SoCal Regionals last year in Smash 4. And even though, you know, it was a Smash 4 event and people said, hey, man, Smash 4 is dead. I'm not going to lie to you. T made sure Smash 4 was alive for him because he mm -hmm. got second place, only losing to Elegant. And as a Pac-Man man, he gets second place. Yeah, that says a lot. Yeah, no, good for him. He got some good wins yesterday. Yeah. And, um, unfortunately, like I said, I wasn't able to watch all of them, but he's... It was Pac-Man. It's just, it kind of reminded me back when Abadam, Abadongo used Pac-Man. Oh, I was yeah. so glad to see <laughs> somebody kept him around and is even using him um, at top play and coming out to these tournaments. I'm not scared to fight these top players, man. Even with a character who's probably considered mid-tier in this game, you yeah. know? Yeah, mid-tier, high-tier. Love to see yeah. it. And some people even they say like, can a high tier win an event? I don't know, man. The team makes it make it look like you win an event. Yeah, it's kind of like mid high. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting to see where like how the TLS is, and especially in the, for these three months. I know, I know, you all are waiting here for especially the patch 3.0 to get Joker. I don't know when that's coming, man. It feels oh, like yeah. forever. There's only three Tuesdays left, and tomorrow is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Tuesday for Hollywood Action Tuesdays. If you want to keep up with more locals, but there's only three more Tuesdays.